Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Shafali Nagpal, Associate Professor at Human Resource Development Center, Bhagat Pool Singh Mahila Vishwadhyale, Sonipat. Today, we will start with the paper, Development of Management Thoughts, Principles and Types under Human Resource Management Paper. In this paper, we will study the concept, evolution, various schools of thoughts, theories, functions, types of management. Now let us start today with a concept of management. After completing this module, you will be able to first understand about the management fundamentals, secondly to inculcate professionalism in the management practices and thirdly to get the knowledge of management functions and its applications. Let us start with the introduction. A more elaborative definition is given by the George R. Terry. He defines management as a process consisting of planning, organizing, actuating and controlling, performed to be determined and accomplish the objectives by the use of people and resources. Firstly, it consider management as a process that is a systematic way of doing the things. Secondly, it states four management activities. Firstly, planning, then organizing, actuating and controlling. Planning is thinking of actions in advance. Organizing is coordination of the human and material resources of an organization. Actuating is motivating and direction of the subordinates. Controlling means the attempt to ensure no deviation from the norm or plan. Thirdly, it states that manager uses people and other resources. For example, a manager who wants to increase the sale might try not to increase the sales force but also to increase the advertising budget. And fourthly, it states that management involves the art of achieving the organization's objectives. Let us understand the concept of management from the various definitions. Management is the art of getting things done through others. The Follett described the management as an art of directing the activities of other persons for reaching the enterprising goals. It is a very common definition of the management. It also suggests that a manager carries only a directing function. This definition was given by the Mary Parker Follett. Now let us understand the management as described by Harold Notes. Management is the art of getting things done through people and with people in formally organized groups. Notes has emphasized that management is getting the work done with the cooperation of the people working in the organization. J.D. Mune and A.C. Rele has also given the definition of management. They state, management is the art of directing and inspiring people. That is, management not only direct but also motivate the people in the organization for getting their best for obtaining their objectives. As per the above mentioned definitions, management is the art of getting things done through people who may be managers and non-managers. At the level of chief executive, the work is getting done through the functional managers. At the middle level, the things are implemented through supervisors and at the lower level, the management is through workers. Human and technical skills both play an important role in getting things done. These definitions represent the traditional viewpoint of management while workers are treated as a factor of production only. They are paid wages for doing their work. Now let us see whether the management is described as the science art or profession. 
As we can see in this picture, we have been given various management definition which are divided into two parts, traditional viewpoint and the modern viewpoint. In the traditional viewpoint, we state that management is the art of getting things done by the others. Secondly, it also state it is a process of planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling the activities of others. A similar definition also states it is mobilizing and utilization of the physical and the human resources for achieving the organizational goals. According to the modern viewpoint, we also have different definitions like it is the prime mover of the organization making it functional and productive. Another definition states it is a process of creating conducive and proper internal environment in the organization. Another definition states that it is a process of coping with the changing external environment by relating strength and weakness of organization with it. Management involves the various characteristics of both art as well as science. While certain aspect of management make it as a science and other describe the application of the skills which make it as a art. Every discipline of art is always backed by science which is basic knowledge of that art. Similarly, every discipline of science is complete only when it is used in practice for solving various kind of problems. Whereas under the science, one normally learns to why of the phenomena and under the art, one learns how of it. In the words of Robert Hilkert, in the area of ma management, science and art are two sides of the same coin. Now let us see in brief how we state management is an art. The management can be an art in the sense that it has the following characteristics. Firstly, just like other art, it has to be practiced and performed. The knowledge should be learned and practiced just as a medical or a legal practitioner practice their respective sciences. The manager gains the experience by continuous application of the management knowledge and facing new experiences. This helps to develop more skills and abilities for translating knowledge into practice. The another point is application calls for the innovativeness and creativity. The fourth reason is that in many situations theoretical knowledge of management may not be adequate or relevant for solving the problem. It may be because of the complexity and unique nature of the problem. The art is in knowing how to accomplish the desired results. This implies that there exists a body of knowledge which management uses to accomplish the desired results in an organization. Now student, let us see how management is described as a science. It has the following characteristics. Firstly, its principle, generalization and concepts are systematic. In this case, the manager can manage the situation or organization systematically and scientifically. Secondly, its principle, generalization and concepts are formulated by the observation, research analysis and experimentation as is the case with the principles of the other sciences. Thirdly, like other sciences, management principles are also based on the relationship of cause and effect. It states that the same cause under the similar circumstances will produce the same effect. Suppose if the workers are paid more, which can be called as a cause, the produce will be more, which is the effect. The another reason is management principles are codified and systematic and can be transferred from one to another and can be taught. Another reason in support to science is management principles are universally applicable to all types of organizations. 
So there is no tailor-made answer to a question, is management science or art? To ascertain the nature of the management concerning science or art, there is a need to know the exact meaning of the words science or art and subsequently their application to the management. Now let us look how a management is called as a profession. There are the following criteria which identify the status of a profession to the management. Firstly, profession is a body of specialized knowledge. Secondly, professional knowledge is systematized and codified form that can be learned through the formal education system. Thirdly, a profession emphasizes on having a central body to formulate the code of behavior for its members. A profession calls for rendering competent and specialized services to the clients. A profession also maintains the scientific attitude and commitment for discovering new ideas and upgrading to improve the quality of service and level of efficiency provided to the clients. A profession requires members to exercise restraint and self-discipline. So, management knowledge meets the first two criteria because it has grown into the systematic body of knowledge and also it can be acquired and learned through the formal education. There is no minimum qualification prescribed either for getting an entry in the management profession or for becoming the members of it. In practice, whosoever manages is known as manager irrespective of the qualification. Peter Drucker, in support of this view, says that no greater damage could be done to our economy or our society than to attempt to professionalize management by licensing managers, for instance, or by limiting access to the management to the people with special academic degree. Regarding professional approach, a manager has to continuously strive for discovering new ideas, relationship and concepts and act in dynamic and innovative manner to cope with the changing environment. Even so, managers are not respected as other professionals like doctors, advocates and chartered accountants. There are, there are five concepts of management. They are functional concept which is defined as the task of planning, coordinating, motivating and controlling the efforts of the other towards the goal and objectives of the organization. According to this concept, management is what a manager does, that is planning, executing and controlling. Human relation concept. According to this concept, management is the art of getting things done through others and with people in the organized group. It is the art of creating an environment in which people can perform and individuals could cooperate towards attaining the group goals. It is an art of removing blanks to such performance, a way of optimizing efficiency and reaching goals. The third is leadership and decision making concept. According to this concept, the management is the art and science of preparing, organizing, directing human efforts applied to the control, the forces and utilize the materials of nature for the benefit of the man. The next is productive concept. According to this concept, management can be defined as the art of securing maximum prosperity with the minimum effort to secure maximum prosperity and happiness for both employer and employee and provide best services thereby. Integration concept. According to this concept, management is the coordination of human and material resources towards the achievement of the organizational objectives as well as the organization of the productive functions essential for achieving stated or accepted economic goals. This above definition of management given by the different writers and authorities are found giving different senses. Virtually 
the five concepts are found developed by the authorities emphasizing in different aspects. However, it has been realized by many that it will not be fair to define management based on the one aspect. Management can be taken as a process, managerial process or social process either engaged in planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling or mobilizing the group activities to achieve the corporate goals. As we can see in this picture that management is a process, management is a discipline and management as a noun. This concept was given by the Hyman and is known as Theo Hyman concept. Principles of management. A principle is a fundamental truth about a phenomena which explain and establishes a cause and effect relationship. These principles are derived from the observations, experiment, experience and analysis of events. These principles serve as a guides to thought and action. A body of interrelated principles dealing with the same subject matter constitute a theory. Thus, a theory of management consists of some principles duly recognized and systematized and concerned with the management of an organization. Management principles are the statements of the truth that explain and establish a cause and effect relationship between various variables and enable a manager to perform the functions successfully and serve as a guide to run the organization properly. These principles are practical guidelines for managerial thinking, decision making and action behavior. Management principles are universal and apply to all types of organization, businesses and non-business, government or private enterprises. Management principles are flexible and not rigid. They are capable of adapting to every need. They can be modified as per the requirement of the situation and the environment through providing useful guidelines for future course of action. Many management principles are not standardized. They are concerned with the human behavior, which is not standardized and is highly unpredictable. So, management principle hold good in large number of situations and need to be modified in specific conditions. That is why the management is regarded as in exact of the soft science. Management principles are not only descriptive but are predictive or normative also. They are equally significant. No principle can be said to have greater importance than the other. Some thinkers, philosophers and practitioners have contributed to the evolvement of these principles of management during the 19th century and 20th century. But two prominent names among all the pioneers are F. M. Taylor and Henry Fayol. Functions of Management The effective management and leadership involve creative problem solving, motivating employees and making sure that the organization accomplishes objectives and goals. There are five functions of management and leadership which are given as planning, organizing, staffing, coordinating and controlling. These functions separate the management process from other business function such as marketing, accounting and finance. Let us see what is planning. Planning is a function of management that controls all the planning that allows the organization to run smoothly. It involves defining a goal and determining the most effective course of action needed to reach that goal. Typically, it involves flexibility as the planner must coordinate with all levels of management and leadership in the organization. Planning also involves knowledge of the company, resources 
and future objectives of the business. Now let us see what is organizing. It is a function of the leadership that controls the overall structure of the company. The organizational structure is the foundation of any company. Without this, the day-to-day -day operations of the business become difficult and unsuccessful. Organizing involves designating tasks and responsibilities to employees with specific skill sets needed to complete the task. Organizing involves developing the organizational structure and chain of command within the company. Staffing. The staffing is the function of the management that controls all the recruitment and personal lead of organization. The main purpose of the staffing is to hire the right people for the right job to achieve the objectives of the organization. Staffing involves more than just recruitment. It encompasses the training and development, performance appraisals, promotions and transfers. Without the staffing function, the business would fail because the business would not be properly staffed to meet its goal. Now also see the coordinating function. It is the leadership that controls all the organizing, planning and staffing activities of the company and ensure all activities function together for the good of the organization. Coordinating typically takes place in meeting and other planning sessions with the department heads of the company to ensure all departments are on the same page in terms of objectives and goals. Coordinating involves communication, supervision and direction by the management. Now let us see one, the another important function, controlling. It is useful for ensuring all other functions of the organization that are in place and are operating successfully. Controlling involves establishing performance standards and monitoring the output of the employee to ensure each employee's performance meet those standards. The controlling process often lead to the identification of the situations and problems that need to be addressed by creating new performance standards. The level of the performance affects the success of all aspects of the organization. Now students, let us study the various level of management. To go on a deeper level, management can be defined as an art and a skill of getting things done through others. The George Terre gives more elaboration to this concept. According to him, management is the distinct process consisting of planning, organizing, activating and controlling the activities performed to determine and accomplishes the objectives by the use of people and resources. If we give our attention towards the definition, we will find that Terre perceives management as a process, a systematic way of doing the things. The four management activities are included in this process and they are planning, organizing, activating and controlling, which makes management. Management means manage plus men plus T. T means tactfully. If we look at the figure, we can see there are three levels of the management. One is top managers who set the objectives, scans the environment, plan and make the decisions. The second level is middle level managers where they report to the top management, oversee the first line managers, they develop and implement the activities, they also allocate the resources. The third is the first line managers or the bottom managers, low level managers. They report to the middle managers, they supervise the employees, they coordinate all the activities and are involved in day to day operations. As we have seen that most of the organizations have three level management. One is low level managers, middle level managers and top level managers. These managers are classified in the hierarchy of authority and perform different tasks. In many organizations, 
the number of manager in every level resembles a pyramid. Below, you will find the specifications of each level, different responsibilities and their likely job titles. Well, let us discuss about the top level managers first. They include the board of directors, president, vice president, CEO, all are the examples of the top level managers. These managers are responsible for controlling and overseeing the entire organization. They develop the goals, strategic plans, company policies, make decisions in the direction of the business. Also, the top level managers play a significant role in the mobilization of the outside resources. They are also accountable to the shareholders and the general public. Then is middle level managers. These are the general managers, branch managers, department managers. They all are the example of middle level. They are accountable to the top management for their department's function. The middle level managers devote more time to the organizational and directional functions than top level managers. Their role can be emphasized as the executing organizational plan in conformance with the company's policy and objectives of the top management. They are the defining and discussing information and the policies from top management to the lower management and most importantly, they are inspiring and guiding low level managers towards the better performance. Some of their functions are designing and implementing effective group and intergroup work and information systems, defining and monitoring group level performance and indicators, diagnosing and resolving problems within and among the groups, designing and implementing reward systems supporting the cooperative behavior. Let us look at the low level managers. They include supervisors, section leads and foremen. These managers focus on controlling and directing. They have the responsibility of assigning employee tasks, guiding and supervising employees on day-to-day -day activities, ensuring the quality and the quantity of the production, making recommendations and suggestions, and up-channeling the employee problems. They are also referred to as first-level managers or low level managers. Are they are the role model for the employees. These managers provide basic supervision, motivation, career planning, performance feedback and staff supervision. Students, let us now take a look at the nature of management. We have discussed the nature of management into the various paths. The first is goal oriented. The most important goal of the management activity is to accomplish the objectives of an enterprise. The goal should be realistic and attainable. Second is supreme in thought and action. Managers should set realizable goals and then mastermind action on all fronts to accomplish them. For this, they require full support from the middle and the lower level of management. Third is group activity. All human and physical resources should be efficiently coordinated to attain maximum level of combined productivity. Without coordination, no work would accomplish and there would be a chaos and retention. The fourth is dynamic function. Management should be equipped to face the changes in the business environment brought by the economic, social, political, technological and human factors. They must be adequate training so that they can be able to perform well even in the critical situations. Next is social science. All individuals that the manager deal with have different levels of sensitivity, understanding and dynamism. The next is an important organ of the society. 
society influences the managerial actions and managerial actions influence the society. It's managers responsibility that they should also contribute towards the society by organizing the charity, functions, sports competition, donation to the NGOs and similarly many more activities. The next is system of authority. The well-defined lines of command, delegation of suitable authority and responsibility at all level of decision making is the system of authority. This is necessary so that each should know what is expected from him and whom he needs to report to. Another point is profession. Manager need to possess managerial knowledge and training and have to confirm to a recognized code of conduct and remain conscious of their social and human obligations. The last is process. The management process comprises of the series of action or operation conducted towards an end. The next topic is scope of management. Although it is difficult to define the scope of management precisely, yet the following areas are included in it. One is subject matter of management that is planning, organizing, directing, coordinating and controlling the activities included in the subject matter of management. Second, functional areas of management which include financial management, accounting, budgetary control, quality control, financial planning, managing the overall finances of an organization. Personal management include the recruitment, training, transfer, promotions, demotions, retirement, terminations, labor welfare and social security, industrial relations. Purchase management include inviting tenders for the raw material, placing orders, entering into the contracts and material control. Then the production management includes the production planning, production control techniques, quality control and inspection, time and motion studies. We also study the manage, maintenance management which involves the proper care and maintenance of the building, plant and machinery. Similarly, transport management includes packaging, warehousing, transportation by the means of rail, road and air. So in the end, we will conclude that management is a universal phenomena. The very survival of the human being down the ages have been dependent on this skill for managing the resources and the command over these skills. Management is relevant even to the personal life of an individual. A successful man in any walk of life know how to manage his affairs. He is capable of getting the utmost out of his time, money, energy and social connections. A student, a businessman, a housewife and other, they all know the art of management. But generally, management means utilization of the group efforts. This effort is to accomplish for reaching a certain specified goals. Thank you.